In the late 1970s, China began to build its first-generation self-propelled anti-aircraft gun based on existing technology. This was the PGZ-88 Type 37 self-propelled anti-aircraft gun, which pioneered the development of domestically produced modern self-propelled anti-aircraft guns and is still in service today. In the 1960s and 70s, several wars of decisive significance occurred worldwide, such as the Vietnam War, also known as the Helicopter War, and a smaller version of the Lightning War in the Middle East. These wars demonstrated new modes of warfare, and the use of various new technologies shocked other countries around the world. Although China was not directly involved in these wars, it collected intelligence as much as possible and grasped the latest combat information to adjust the army's construction. From the experience, the Chinese military realized the importance of self-propelled anti-aircraft guns, which can provide real-time low-altitude defense for ground forces. Although China had experimented with modifying the 58-type tank chassis into a self-propelled anti-aircraft gun before, the technological level was too low, resembling towed anti-aircraft guns. What the military truly needed was highly automated self-propelled anti-aircraft guns capable of actively seeking and launching attacks. The development of the new self-propelled anti-aircraft gun posed many challenges for the designers. First, in the selection of artillery, the performance of the Soviet-style 23mm machine gun was satisfactory at the time, but since the relevant technology was not available, the relatively advanced 76-type double 37 automatic naval gun was chosen. For the choice of the anti-aircraft gun chassis, the initial plan was to use the 59-type medium tank chassis. However, this chassis had sufficient load-bearing capacity, but the power generation was insufficient to support the high-power consumption artillery control equipment and radar equipment. Fortunately, progress was made with the 69-type tank at the time, so the chassis of the 69-3 was directly used. The artillery has an auxiliary loading system and uses a belt for ammunition supply. A cylindrical ammunition box with a capacity of 500 rounds is located in the middle of the chassis. The artillery elevation and rotation are driven by electricity. The ammunition used is a 2 kg tracer shell or semi-armor piercing explosive shell, with an initial muzzle velocity of 1000 meters per second. The maximum firing rate of a single gun is 380 rounds per minute, and the maximum effective firing altitude is 3000 meters. The artillery has an elevation angle of 5 degrees to 85 degrees, capable of continuous fire or semi-automatic firing, and the two guns can also fire independently, providing ground support capability. Unlike the original experimental self-propelled anti-aircraft gun, the PGZ-88 integrates a complete fire control system, including search and range-finding radar, identification of friend or foe equipment, and electro-optical coordinate instruments. The radar antenna is located at the rear of the turret and rotates at a speed of 30 revolutions per minute, with a detection range of 8 to 15 kilometers and a maximum search altitude of 3,000 meters. The entire artillery system adopts a closed structure, with the body slightly weakened based on the 69 to 3, and the turret is welded and can withstand light weapons or shell fragments. The artillery system consists of a crew of four personnel, including a driver, gunner, and tracker. In addition to commanding, the vehicle commander also serves as the radar operator, showing a high level of automation. The combat weight is about 35 tons, with a maximum speed of 50 km per hour and a maximum range of 440 km. The PGZ-88 self-propelled anti-aircraft gun was finalized in 1989 and was originally intended to participate in the 40th anniversary celebration. Unfortunately, it did not make it in time. Subsequently, 24 units were produced and entered service. These self-propelled anti-aircraft guns were used for mobile low-altitude defense of armored units, marking the beginning of China's modern self-propelled artillery. Although it was somewhat inferior to foreign products of the same period, it was at least a purely domestic product, with the accumulated technology providing many long-term benefits. However, returning to the PGZ-88 itself, 
it was only of moderate level in the 1980s and could be considered a qualified equipment. Its biggest drawback was the lack of a command system, meaning that each self-propelled artillery could only operate independently in actual combat, unable to be unified under command, to a certain extent, reducing the defensive efficiency. In addition, its response time was also relatively long, and the system operation was complicated, making it vulnerable to surprise attacks.